Hi folks, hope you're enjoying and benefiting from our guitar lesson series. Remember, it's essential that you watch these lesson videos in order. Each lesson leads into the next and you won't get the big picture if you skip any of the steps. Many of you have been searching for these answers for years. You might be tempted to jump ahead and look at lesson 24 because you're into the blues, but if you don't know your intervals and modes from lesson 12 and 17, you just ain't going to get it. Consider purchasing the 150-page official course handbook for $19.95 from our website at www.absolutelyunderstandguitar.com. You'll find that link multiple places here on our YouTube channel. Each of the 32 video lessons has a corresponding printable page that you can view to help with review and memorization. All of the charts and graphs I create in the videos are reprinted there. The package also includes our amazing chord, scale, and arpeggio encyclopedia containing most every useful finger pattern known to man. Reserve your copy today. If you like what you're learning here, tell all your friends and like and subscribe to our channel. So enjoy this lesson and continue on and you will absolutely understand guitar. Hi, welcome back to Absolutely Understand Guitar. I'm Scotty West. Well, we've got more interesting stuff for you again today. As it turns out, there are not just 12 keys to play in. Every major key has its relative minor key and a bunch of modal keys as well. What does this mean and how can you tell whether you're in a major, minor, or modal key? This is lesson 22, so make sure your booklet is open to page 22. You'll also need your slide rule and finger charts. All set? Here we go. Hi, welcome back. Um, Today we're going to talk about the, the fact that, that actually up until now we've been saying that there are actually 12 keys that you can play and you know there's 12 notes and any note can function as the root note of a key. So we've been saying that there are 12 keys but you're also going to find out today that for every major key there is what's known as its relative minor key. It's that all important 1-6 relationship that we've seen in so many contexts. Uh, last week we were talking about it from the point of view of uh, pentatonic scales and we as a matter of fact mentioned that the minor pentatonic scale is the sixth mode of the major pentatonic scale. Remember, every pattern of intervals could be considered a scale, and every scale can generate a system of modes. Sometimes it's just not meaningful to talk about, other times it is. Um, uh, particularly in the case of the major diatonic scale, knowing your seven different diatonic modes is very important because so much of Western music is based on uh, that way of thinking. And um, we, uh, what this has to do with playing is improvisationally or composing or creating or analyzing melodies has to, a lot to do with this up here. That remember, a lot of times when you start jamming, you think, wow, I can play one scale over several different chords, but that's not true. What you find out is there's actually a separate scale for each chord that you play. How can both of these things be true? Well, the same set of notes actually is several different scales. It's just a matter of which note in the set is do. We're going to look at a, at, at a different kind of variation on our thinking about that today. The most important set of modes that you want to know about are these down here, the diatonic modes, because so much of Western music, particularly Western popular music, is based on uh, uh, this way of thinking, that, that, that the major scale, since it has seven notes in it, also has seven modes, and this explains an awful lot about where we where these common chord scale relationships wa uh, uh, come from and why we keep seeing the same sets of chords over and over and over again. Haven't you played about a thousand songs that all have G major, C major, D major, E minor, and A minor? Uh, that's because within that set of seven diatonic modes relative to the key of G, and we're just using the key of G as an example, each one of those chords, G major, C major, D major, E minor, and A minor, each one of those triads would be embedded inside one of those seven different modes. And that also tells you which scale you would use at any given moment to select notes out of in order to construct your melodies. Now that's all about major key music, major diatonic music. Now, uh, 
right after we did that, we uh, talked for quite a while about your mode jam tape, where you, uh, which had those various chord progressions on it, which you can use to to help you memorize all the multiple fingerings for your different scales. It's a lot more fun doing it that way than just sitting there learning your scales. Not only that, when you're playing along with that mode jam tape, you're also doing a certain amount of ear training too, particularly if you sing the notes as as they go by and and. Um, and actually look at the color coding of your finger charts to figure out where the thirds and the fifths and the sevenths and all that stuff are. After that, what uh, a lot of you knew something about the diatonic modes. Sometimes people think those are the only modes that there are. But remember, any scale can generate a system of modes. And so what we were talking about last time was uh, other systems of modes. And w one of the first big ones you'd like to know something about are the pentatonic modes. Uh, many of you started jamming using pentatonic scales rather than diatonic scales. So what we found out was that pentatonic scales obviously therefore must have modes as well. And uh, they function pretty much the same as the diatonic modes do. It's just there's a couple of notes left out. Why would you want to leave those notes out? If you ask me, there's not as many good reasons as people think. A lot of times, pentatonic scales, I feel, are, are overrated in terms of their significance to um, uh, rock and roll and modern popular music. What other scales had system of, of modes that were worth looking at? Uh, one is uh, melodic minor. Uh, which is another one of the list uh, scales on your must-know list. That scale has seven different modes as well. Uh, these are not as common as the di uh, major diatonic modes by any means and would not show up in strict diatonic type music. However, as we know, when we looked at that pie chart uh, back when we were talking about the diatonic modes, we suggested that only 50% of the songs you're ever going to come across uh, actually work strictly modally. So it is in music that's out slightly outside of that framework in which we see the modes of melodic minor. Um, Lydian flat 7 and Mixolydian flat 13, those two, uh, the uh, fourth and fifth modes of melodic minor are relatively common. And, and after you've mastered your diatonic fingerings and you're looking for more scales to learn, uh, those would be my recommendation along with your pentatonic scales uh, for memorizing all of those too. Uh, another uh, whole list of scales you have, I don't have a graphic to show you on that uh, right now, but a whole other list of scales you have are those exotic scales. And um, like I, as I mentioned last week, it's really beyond the scope of this program to, to really get heavily into those. I, to tell you the truth, I don't know a lot about, uh, about those scales either. But some of them, if you play them, you might have some fun playing them. You can certainly, hopefully by now, with the, your knowledge of intervals and your knowledge of your fretboard, uh, you, you could finger, uh, figure out your own finger charts for those scales and play them. And you will notice uh, some of them will sound familiar to you because uh, they do occasionally, uh, are occasionally used in uh, popular music. Now, that pretty much is all about major key music. Uh, quickly, let's review this concept too. What does it mean for a piece of music to be in a key in the first place? Well, as we've said, I think several times before, that, that's a, uh, a, a question with a lot of different facets to it. Uh, for example, what does it mean for a piece to be in a key? Well, many of you who've had some formal uh, musical training know about the key signature. So if you look at the sheet music and you see the number of sharps and flats in the key signature, that tells you uh, what key you're in and in implies that uh, what the key signature is about is for any given one of the 12 major keys is uh, what black keys or what sharp and flat notes do you have to play in order to play a major diatonic scale starting on a given note. For example, the key of A major. The key signature has three sharps because in order to play a major scale starting on A, if you look at your slide rule and put your uh, the major diatonic in the upper left and you put A in the first window there, you'll see that the the in order to play a major diatonic scale starting on A, you go A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and then A. So you wind up with three sharps in that key signature. That's one thing that playing in a key is about. The um, uh, 
so it's, it's about the notes that are in the major scale. It's about the key signature of the piece. Uh, 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 many times you look at the, at the song to try to see what the first chord in the song is. Oftentimes you look to see what the last chord in the song is. You develop, when I, when I, I say when, you, when you're trying to figure out what key a song is in, you develop evidence towards a particular conclusion. And if all of these things are lining up, uh, then you, you can be pretty confident of what key you're playing in. But I think still the most significant thing, the most significant fact to know about what key you're playing in is in any given song, even though that song may have a bunch of different notes in it, somewhere in that song is one note out of the 12 that's acting as the nucleus note for the piece. And everything always seems to resolve to that. Everything seems to return to that harmonically. That's why oftentimes it is the last chord in the song. And um, as we begin today to talk about major uh, major keys versus minor keys, um, when you're looking for that home, what I call the home chord, the chord like you feel that everything has come back to rest again, sometimes you'll notice that that's a major chord. Other times you'll notice that that's a minor chord. It's a sad sounding minor chord that everything returns to. That's a dead giveaway that you're playing a, a piece of music in a minor key. So let's begin to talk about that today. What, how do you know? What are the parameters? What do we have to understand about in order to make sense of, of the concept? of playing in major keys relative to minor keys. Well, we know a lot about major diatonic harmony at this point. We said that you know, f uh, uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 50% of the music you've ever heard uh, works off of this, the concept of the major key. Now, uh, what I'm actually uh, works off the concept of diatonic harmony, and maybe somewhere in the vicinity of 50% of that, or in other words, 25% of music is actually major key stuff, and 25% of it is minor key stuff. What does it mean for music to be in a minor key? Um, as I just mentioned, um, minor key music may be as common as major key music, and so, isn't it interesting, we took several hours, two or three hours, to get through the subject of major diatonic harmony. You would almost think that, that since minor key music is equally important, that it might take us hours to get through that too. But interestingly enough, it's not. We're going to have this mostly out of the way today, because if you understand the concept of major key music, you find out that minor key music um, has a very significant relationship to major key music, which means it's going to be very easy for you to uh, assimilate this information about minor key music. In fact, I'm fond of saying that the whole concept of minor key music basically can be summed up in three words, two of which are numbers, and you'll see that in a second. What does it mean to have music in minor keys? A lot of the same type of modal stuff is at work here. I am fond of saying that the concept of minor key music can be summed up in three words, and here it is. So listen very carefully. All basically that's going on when you're talking about minor key music is this. Six becomes one. Six becomes one. Remember our old concept of the relative minor? That's come up so many times before. When we were talking about the, um, the must-know scales, we uh, noticed the relationship between the one mode, which is the Ionian mode, and the sixth mode, which is the Aeolian mode. And we drew that arrow back and forth between the two of them. And we suggested that it's that one-six relationship that is the essence of this relative major, relative minor relationship. When you're playing major key music, the Ionian mode, the major diatonic scale, is the first mode. It is the tonic mode. It is the scale that all the other modes and therefore all the other embedded chords are originating out of, if you will. Well, all that happens in minor key music is the happy sounding major scale, the major diatonic scale, the Ionian mode, is no longer the one mode. It, it turns out, you'll find out in a minute, it turns out to be the three mode, but the now the central scale that we're going to be looking at is what we've come to call the Aeolian mode, the sixth mode. If you look at the page here across the top, 
up here, you see that this is not the pattern of intervals for a major scale. Notice how one whole step to two, but then we have a half step between the second and third notes. So that must be flat three right there. So we're talking about some kind of minor scale. Turns out this is the sixth mode, the Aeolian mode. One, two, flat three, whole step to four, whole step to five, half step to flat six, whole step to flat seven, whole step to eight right there. And then uh, there's just a second octave of it right there. And we're going to examine the modes of this scale right here. In this context, very often this scale is not so much referred to um, as the Aeolian mode as it is referred to as the natural minor. If you look back at your must-know list of scales, you will see that the Aeolian mode has several different names that we, we, we actually made a box around it because it, it uh, after the major diatonic scale, it, it, it arguably is the second most important scale in, in uh, Western music because you've got that happy, sad, black, white, positive, negative, relative major, relative minor relationship going on. We called that scale the Aeolian mode, we, but we also also called it the relative minor and we also called it the natural minor. It is the minor scale that naturally evolves out of the major scale, if you will. If you take a major scale and start on its sixth note and examine the pattern of intervals that you get then, you come up with this scale that goes one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, Eight. This is the natural minor scale. Now, this scale, like any other scale, would have a system of modes, wouldn't it? And we have them arrayed down here. If you see, it's the same pattern of intervals, but each time we're just starting on the next note in the sequence. And um, the interesting thing to realize is since the natural minor scale, since the Aeolian mode is one of the modes of the major diatonic scale itself, as we look at this system of modes generated by the natural minor scale, we are not going to discover any new scales at all. As I think we mentioned in a previous lesson, if you examine the modes of a scale that's already part of a system of modes, you're going to just re-expose the same scales that you already know. We are about to simply go through our major diatonic modes here again. It's just we're going to be looking at them in a different order. Now, all of a sudden, mode number one is not Ionian. Mode number one is Aeolian. And it is a minor scale. And so, in a minor key, the home chord is the triad, is the minor chord that is embedded inside of the natural minor scale. We have a one, we have a flat three, and we have a five. The home chord, the one chord in a natural minor key is the is a minor chord. Um, uh, another way that you tell that you're in a, whether you're in a major key or a minor key is, is What's the emotional tenor of the song? Is it, uh, is it a happy sounding song? Does it have a lot of major chords in it? Or are the significant chords in the song um, all minor chords? Is it a sadder sounding uh, song? Uh, just to remind ourselves, just because you're in a major key does not mean that all the chords in that piece are, are minor. You know that, of course. One, four, five, and major are major, but two, three, six are minor. Um, also, so what that means is when you're playing in a minor key, it doesn't mean the song is completely made up of minor chords. It just means that there are probably more minor chords, and certainly the home chord feels like a minor chord. Since when we're examining the natural minor chords uh, and harmonization, remember there's a word we should remind you of too. What we are doing at this point now is we are harmonizing a natural minor scale. In the past, we have uh, so far we have harmonized a uh, major diatonic scale in, in order to. Uh, uncover the concept of the ma of major diatonic music, major diatonic keys. Now we are harmonizing a minor 
a natural minor scale. We are examining the particular scale chord relationships that evolve out of the system of systems of modes generated by the natural minor scale. As we mentioned a few minutes ago, we are not about to discover any new scales like we did when we looked at the modes of melodic minor last week. Remember, we learned seven new scales like Dorian flat 9 and Mixolydian flat 13 and Lydian flat 7 and all that. Uh, those were brand new scales that we had never seen before. We are now going to look at the same old modes again, but they're just going to be in a different order. If six has become one, then the old seven is going to become the new two. Do you remember, hopefully you have your diatonic modes memorized now. You know that the sixth mode is Aeolian. Do you remember what the seventh major diatonic mode was? It's Locrian, right? So being the old seven, in this context, it becomes the new two. Since 6 is 1, 7 is 2, and that's the Locrian mode, which, as you'll recall, goes 1, flat 2, flat 3, 4, flat 5, flat 6, flat 7, 8. You might also remember about Locrian mode that since it has a flatted fifth in it, it is neither a major scale or a minor scale. Remember, major scales and minor scales have fives in them. This is the only diatonic mode that doesn't have a five. It has a flatted five. Since it has a flat three and a flat five, that means it is more closely related to what are called diminished patterns. So the two chord in a piece of minor diatonic music is, is likely to be a diminished chord, whereas the seventh chord in um, major diatonic music is liable to be diminished. Same old mode, same old order. We're just starting on, on six instead of one. Six becomes one. Seven becomes two. What is the third mode in a, in a minor diatonic key? Well, we're back to our tonic diatonic mode again. The three in a minor key is the old one from the major key. It's our good old friend, the um, Ionian mode, the major diatonic scale itself. The three chord in a minor key chord progression is liable to be a major chord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, our good old friend, the major scale. Same old modes, same old order. We're just starting with six. That means that the four mode is the old major diatonic two mode, the Dorian mode. So the four chord in a piece of minor key music is going to be embedded within the Dorian mode and is going to be a minor chord. W the Dorian mode, one, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, eight. That's the fourth mode. The fifth mode would be the old three mode from the major diatonic key, which you'll recall is Phrygian. So the five mode is, is Phrygian, which you'll recall, hopefully, um, is also a minor scale. How do we know it's minor? Of course, as you recall, it's got a flatted third in it. One, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, eight. So the five chord in a minor key chord progression is most likely going to be a minor chord. The sixth mode of a minor key chord progression is going to be the old four mode, which is Lydian, which is major. So the six, in this case, is major. It's our good old friend, the Lydian mode, and is a major scale. Therefore, the six chord in a piece of minor diatonic music is most likely going to be a major chord. One, two, three, sharp four. Remember, that's the characteristic note of the Lydian mode. Five, six, seven, eight. Finally, our seventh mode in a minor diatonic key is our old five mode from the major key. It's, it's the mixolydian which, as you recall, is a major scale because it's got a major third in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. There's the flat seven, which is the characteristic note of um, the Mixolydian mode, and eight. So when we look at the, at the 
modes and embedded triads, the embedded chords in minor key music, we see that they're the same as the major key stuff. It's just we're starting on six. That's why I say it's not going to take us hours and hours to learn about minor key music because you're three quarters of the way already there if you just know your major diatonic stuff there. So, no new scales, no new modes or anything like that, just a different way of thinking of them. They are simply arrayed differently. And what this means, what's really significant about this is we, we are uh, going to notice some new types of chord progressions that are going to emerge out of this. Um, the most notable one is this. Do you remember the answer to this question? Back when we were talking about major key music. Um, you know that the most common chord progression is a 1-4-5 progression, right? Many of you had heard of that before you wound up taking this program altogether. 1-4-5 progression. You hopefully also remember that in a major key, 1-4-5 are all going to turn out to be major chords because those three modes are major scales. The Ionian, the Lydian, and the Mixolydian are the one mode, the four mode, and the five mode. They were all major scales, which means 1-4-5 chord progressions in a major key are all major chords. But now check this out. A very interesting thing happens in minor key music. In minor key music, one, four, five, in a sense, is replaced by the old six, two, three. In other words, the spacing of one, four, five is the same as the spacing of six, two, three, which are the minor um, tonal centers within, a, within the key. So as soon as six becomes one, Four and five also become minor because they are the old two and the old three. If you look here, one is Aeolian, four is Dorian, and five is Phrygian. An interesting thing to note about minor key music based on the natural minor scale, a minor key, a natural minor key harmonization is you get a one, four, five progression that's all minor chords instead of being all major chords the way they were in um, uh, major key music. One, four, and five all become minor chords because it's the same as the old six, two, three. When six became one, two became four, and three became five. Aeolian, Dorian, Phrygian are, are uh, the three uh, scales. So isn't that interesting right there? Now, I'm going to grab my guitar here for a second, and let's just listen for a moment to a couple of different chord progressions. Uh, first, we'll listen to a 1-4-5 progression in the key of A major. That would be A major, D major, and E major. And you've heard a million songs. I know a lot of you know that, the, that blues music is basically thought of as being a 1-4-5 progression. Some people think that that's, that that's what defines the blues as opposed to other forms of music, but that's not true at all. Remember, 1-4-5 is the most common chord progression in any style of music. Well, I say that in, in any conventional style of popular music and a lot of the way into classical music and jazz even, 1-4-5. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, Mary had a little lamb, happy birthday. These are all 1-4-5 progressions. Now, in a major key, a key of A major, if you look at your slide rule, you'll, you'll, you know that on your scale side of the slide rule, you even have have um, a, a section that says the common progression, the most common progression a in A major, one, four, five progression would be A, D, and E. And you've heard a million songs that go like this. Uh, by the way, when you're talking about a 1-4-5 progression, it, it doesn't mean that you have to play the chords in that order either. Um, you can play them in any order you want. It would still be called a 1-4-5 progression. That's what accounts for all these songs all being 1-4-5 progressions, but they all sound different from one another, don't they? Happy Birthday doesn't sound exactly like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star because the chords are played in a different order and you dwell on them for a different amount of time and stuff like that. Now, listen to this. That was a 1-4-5 progression in the key of A major. Now, Let's look at a 1-4-5 progression in the key of A minor. And um, 
we know that in a minor key, the one, four, five are all minor chords. And so the whole sound of the thing is going to be sadder. And we're going to be listening to three different minor chords now. Instead of A major, here's A minor. And that's going to be our home chord now. The whole song is going to have more of a sad sound to it. So here's A minor. And then we go to D minor. minor, which is the five chord, and then back to A minor. Now, of course, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that this works equally well in any one of the 12 keys. So notice that, a one, four, five progression, but again, the chords are all minor chords. If you think about it, you've heard a million songs that all work that way, too. And uh, uh, that's just it. That's how you tell the difference between a major, uh, a major key and a minor key. So um, that's how you tell the difference between a major, uh, music that's in a major key and a minor key. I have another chord progression that I want to show you that's a classic minor key chord progression, too, that you'll see in a moment. But before I can show you that, I want to point out one other thing. This may be a little bit confusing to you, but uh, hopefully you'll get what I'm talking about. The natural minor scale has seven modes, doesn't it? And they are based on the natural minor scale. Um, the one thing I want to point out is this. Take a look at the third mode of the natural minor. It's our good old friend, the Ionian mode, as a matter of fact. But we are calling this the third mode, aren't we? The Ionian mode is the third mode in a minor key chord progression. But one thing I want to point out is, because it is considered to be the third mode, that does not mean that it's rooted on note number three, is it? The third mode of the natural minor key is not rooted on note number three. Why not? Well, because remember, since our mother scale that we're working off of is a minor scale, then that means even though we consider it the third mode, it's actually rooted on the flatted third note within the key. Now, this is significant because um, the, what that means is the root note of the third mode in a minor key is only a half step above the root note of the second mode. See what I mean? The, the root note of the second mode and the root note of the third mode are only a half step apart. Even though we are considering this the third mode, in a way, we should almost think of it as the flatted third mode because it's not rooted on note number three, it's actually rooted on the flatted third in the key. What that also means is our sixth and seventh modes down here. We, we would call this mode number six and we would call this mode number seven, but they are not rooted on the sixth and seventh note of the scale. They are actually rooted on the flat six and the flat seven. Because remember, our mother scale that we're working off here is the natural minor scale, which doesn't have a six and a seven in it. It has a flat six and a flat seven. So we may indeed call this the sixth mode, but remember it's actually rooted on the flat six of that scale. And the seventh mode, indeed we would call it the seventh mode, but it's not rooted on note number seven, it's rooted on the flat seven. Which remember, the flat seven is a whole step below the tonic note. If we had an eighth mode, of course, it would be the same as the first mode here, wouldn't it? It would be rooted on that note right there. And it's a whole step back from there to the root note of the seventh mode, which is the flat seven. And then it's another whole step back from there to the root note of the sixth mode, which is actually rooted on flat six. Now, the reason I point this out is I wanted to show you another absolute classic uh, um, chord progression from a minor key. It's a chord progression that you've heard dozens and dozens, hundreds and hundreds of songs that work this way. I'll do it again in the key of A minor. Um, so what that means is uh, A minor is going to be my tonic chord. I'm playing this A minor in the E form if you've got all your chords memorized. Sounds like a sad sounding minor chord, doesn't it? 
that's my tonic chord. It, it could be thought of as, as the one chord. It could also, for this, these purposes right now, it could also be thought of as the eight chord, couldn't it? Because eight is the same as one. Well, I want to mention, I want to think of it that way now because I'm going to show you this descending chord progression that you've heard a million times. And what happens is, haven't you heard this a million times? A minor chord is the home chord. The next chord in the progression, you descend by a whole step to a major chord. And then the next chord in the progression, you descend by another whole step down to another major chord. And then you might start back up again, back to that major chord, and then finally back to the home chord again. This is a very common minor key chord progression. A minor chord, the tonic chord, then you descend by a whole step to a major chord. Then you descend by another whole step to another major chord. This could be All Along the Watchtower by Jimi Hendrix. Although that's not the key that he plays in here. It could be like Phil Collins. I can see it coming in the air tonight. If you think about it, you'll think of a, a hundred songs that you know that have that same kind of chord progression in it. Now, that's a classic minor key chord progression, isn't it? Because if you think of what we were just talking about a moment ago, if you're on your tonic chord up here, let's, let's think of it as being number eight. That would be a minor chord, wouldn't it? You descend by a whole step to the uh, seven chord, which is going to be a major chord, isn't it? Because that's our good old friend, the Mixolydian mode, rooted on the flat seven. Then you descend by another whole step to the sixth mode, which is actually rooted on the flat six, which is also a major scale, isn't it? It's our good old friend, the Lydian mode. So we went eight minor, seven major, six major, and then back up again. Classic minor key chord progression. And, uh, you know, like I said, you've heard a thousand songs that all work that way. That is really the essence of minor key music. There isn't an awful lot more to be said about it. One thing to realize is that um, when you're looking at the sheet music, how do you tell whether, uh, w whether you're in a major key or a minor key? The interesting thing is, uh, to a certain degree, you can't. Because remember, as we said, for every major key, there is its relative minor key, and the relative minor key in the sheet music will have the same um, key signature as its relative major key. Grab your slide rule here. Let's zoom in on this for a second, because I want to show you where on the slide rule you find this major and minor st uh, relationship uh, stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my slide rule set up in the key of C here. Now... If we can zoom in on that, you'll see I have this, this slide rule set up to be in the key of C. And so if you're looking at your Ionian mode up here, maybe if we can even get in a little tighter than that. Um, in the key of C, we know that the, uh, it, it's C, the major scale in the key of C is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And that is the one mode, isn't it? That's Ionian. Remember, we're talking about major key music again. Now, I've sort of ch uh, switched uh, channels here. We're, we're talking about major key music. Now, take a look at this down here. This is mode number six, isn't it? That's the Aeolian mode. It's also known as the natural minor. And you will always be able to calculate your relative major, relative minor relationships with your slide rule by just looking at what's in the Ionian window here, which in this case is a C. And what's in the Aeolian window here, it even says over here, relative minor, which is A. In other words, the key of A minor is the relative minor key of the, of the key of C major. And another thing you'll want to notice is over here, um, is, is there's, a, there's an alternative set of Roman numerals along this side over here. And you see up here it says degrees of the natural minor scale. You, you know, uh, we also have a, um, a set of Roman numerals over here as well. Uh, and they go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But if you notice the uh, Roman numerals over here, one is actually here, w which is the same as six. So this set of Roman numerals actually is talking about minor key music, whereas this set of Roman numerals over here is talking about the, the, the relative major relationship. Once again, we see that six has become one, so seven has become two. And 
one has become three and two has become four and so on and so forth. So when you're using the slide rule to be in a minor key, you want to look at these Roman numerals over here, uh, the degrees of the natural minor scale. Um, what is, for example, the relative minor of the key of D major? Let's put, oh, let's, let's pick one that's even further away. What's the relative minor of the key of G major? So I set my slide rule up here to be in the key of G this time. And so that's the key of G major. If I look down here at the Aeolian mode, I see that there's an E in the, in the window at the Aeolian mode, in, in the uh, window for the relative minor. The relative minor key of the key of G major is E minor. And again, there's 12 different major keys, so, and it, that means there's 12 different minor keys too. Each key has its own relative minor and will have the same key signature in the music. So people go, well, when I look at a key signature in a piece of music, how can I tell whether I'm in a major key or a minor key? How can I tell whether I'm in the key of G major or in the key of E minor? And I, I go, basically, you really can't. You really can't just by looking at the key signature alone. You have to listen to the piece. If you're looking at a, in a, uh, a kind of a songbook, like a pop rock type songbook, um, you may well notice that the first chord in the song is E minor. The key signature is one sharp, and you can't tell whether that's the key of G major or the key of E minor just by looking at that. But then you begin to notice that, that the song is loaded with E minor chords, that it always seems to, uh, to resolve to E minor, that, that indeed the last chord in the song is E minor. That's the giveaway that, that, that the song is actually in the key of E minor. There you go. Uh, there is more to playing in minor keys than that, that, but that's basically the gist of it. Remember, the concept of playing in minor keys can be summed up in pretty much in three lousy words right up along the top of the page here. Six becomes one. Six becomes one. The natural minor, the aeolian mode, becomes the scale that everything works off of. That gives you a chord progression that is like a one, four, five progression are now all going to be minor chords instead of major chords. And uh, uh, you use the corresponding modes to create your melodies out of as well. Okay. There's another thing, though, that we've got to talk about, about minor keys, though. Um, there, there's a, a second variation on minor keys, and, it, and it's almost like, I, I call it a second variation, but in a way, it's almost more common than this way of thinking about minor keys. And it goes like this. I'm, you might remember my old caveman fable that I made up. I also kind of made up a fable about this, too. It, it seems to be the easiest way to describe it to people. Um, the natural minor evolves out of the relative major, doesn't it, and, and gives us a chord progression that's a one four five progression that's all minor chords right well once upon a time there was this composer this songwriter and and it's back in the old days whenever they would be and music in the old days had to be written a lot more by the rules than it has to be today um, and so this, this was a pretty straight-ahead songwriting kind of guy, and, and he didn't want to rock the boat. He didn't want to cause any problems or anything like that. And he sat down one day, and he decided that he wanted to, to write a song. He was feeling a little sad that day, so he decided he was going to write a, um, a song in a minor key. And once again, I chose, choose the key of A minor. And uh, he was feeling a little sad that day. He decided he was going to write a song in a minor key. And he starts off, and, and he starts to do his 1-4-5 progression in the key of A minor, which is A minor, D minor, and E minor, and back to A minor again. So he's uh, strumming along. He's trying to think of his lyrics. A minor, the one chord, D minor, E minor, the five chord piece of minor key music. He goes to play it again when all of a sudden he, he makes a mistake. His finger slips and he winds up playing the one chord as a minor chord like he's supposed to. He winds up playing the four chord, the D minor, as a minor chord. But when he goes to play the five chord, the E chord, he winds up playing it as a major chord instead of a sad sounding minor chord. And he goes, oh my god, that breaks the rules. 
I'm not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to do a 1-4-5 progression that's all minor chords. But he made a mistake and he played the 5 chord as a major chord. not supposed to happen but wow that sounds really good so like I said he's afraid of being arrested for breaking the rules you know what I mean so he gets up and he closes all the windows in the house and he goes back to his guitar and wow the five chord is a major chord that sounds really good but it breaks all the rules. The natural minor is not supposed to work like that. The one, the four, and the five chord are all supposed to be minor chords. But wow, it sounds really good to have the five chord be a major chord. So he works up all his nerve and he invites his best friend over, his most trusted friend who's also a musician, and he goes, hey, and he closes all the windows in the house and he goes, oh my goodness, you know, I gotta show you this thing. The other day I was writing this song and I was playing the one chord minor. And I was playing the four chord minor. But when I went to play the five chord, I played it as a major chord. And his friend goes, oh my God, that breaks all the rules. But wow, that sounds really good. So they invent this kind of underground society and one by one these people come in and it's like, they get exposed to this music where the five chord in a minor key is actually a major chord. Finally, everybody in the entire town is into this new thing where, where even though it breaks the rules, the music sounds really good in a minor key if you play the five chord as a major chord. Finally, they all decide something's got to be done about this. This breaks the rules, but it just sounds too good. So they all grab their pitchforks and their torches, and they form this giant mob, and they go streaming through the streets of the village, um, all chanting, we want the five chord major, we want the five chord major, and they, they go storming up the hill to the top of the hill where the castle is, where the king of music lives. And they're all out there in the dark with their pitchforks and torches going, we want the five chord major, we want the five chord major. King comes out on the balcony and he goes, what's all this noise about? And, and they kind of shuffle the composer up to the front of the, of the line and he goes, sire, sire, I don't want to be burned at the stake for breaking the rules, but the other day I was writing this song and I played the one chord minor, and I played the four chord minor, but, I played the five chord major. And the king goes, that breaks all the rules. But wow, that sounds really good. So they all are waiting for what the king's going to do. And he goes, well, I guess we're just going to have to change the rules, aren't we? Wow. And so what did they do? They invented a scale. So let me write a couple of notes on the board here. In order, to, they, in order so that they could have a chord progression like that that wouldn't break the rules, they had to invent a new scale to harmonize. We want the five chord to be major. We want the five chord to be a major chord instead of a minor chord. So what did we do? We invented a new scale. And this is one of the few scales on your original must-know list of scales that we first looked at several weeks ago. Um, this is the, like the one scale that we haven't looked at yet. This is that scale on there that's known as harmonic minor. We haven't talked about that scale yet, have we? So we invented, if you will, we invented what's known as harmonic minor. Now, let's take a look at this down here. This is a harmonization. We're going to do another harmonization now. We've harmonized a major scale. We've harmonized a natural minor scale. Now we're going to learn about how to harmonize a harmonic minor scale. Take a look at this. Here's a new pattern of intervals. The first thing you notice about it is it's not just made up of whole steps and half steps the way every other scale, well, except for the pentatonics, has been, certainly uh, from the other diatonic scales. This scale, if you look right here, has one place in it where you actually skip two notes. This is a step and a half interval right here. And here's its octave version 
up here. But within one octave, you have this one place where you have a step and a half interval. This is the harmonic minor scale. If we look at the number notes, this scale goes one, whole step to two, half step to flat three, whole step to four, whole step to five, half step to flat six. So far, this scale is identical to the natural minor. If you look up there, you'll see that this is identical to the natural minor scale that we've been talking about up to this point. But here's where it's different. Here, you skip over two notes and land on the seven instead of the flat seven the way we landed in uh, um, natural minor. Natural minor had a whole step above the flat six and we landed on flat seven and then we had another whole step to eight. Here we have this step and a half interval from flat six up to seven and then up to eight. Now, What's this got to do with anything? Well, the thing to notice is the harmonic minor scale is identical to the natural minor scale, except it has note number seven in it instead of the flat seven. And that opens up this step and a half interval here. But that's the main difference. The harmonic minor has note number seven instead of flat seven. Am I right? You're looking at your charts there and you can see that. Well, you see, we invented that scale because, now listen carefully here, this can be a little bit confusing. If you raise the flat seven up to a seven in the one mode, that will raise the third in the fifth mode up from being a flatted third up to being a major third and that's how we accomplish having the five chord in a, made, in a minor key piece of music, be a major chord instead of a minor chord. Boy, that's hard to get, isn't it? I'm, I'm going to show you on the chart here in a minute, but let me say that again. By raising the seventh note of the natural minor up from flat seven to seven, we accomplished raising the third in the five mode up from being a flat three, which originally made it minor, up to being major. Now, I'll show you what I mean here. In a piece of either natural minor or harmonic minor music. In a harmonization of either of those minor scales, our one mode has a flatted third and a fifth in it. So that means that the one mode in a minor key piece of music is a minor scale. And so therefore, the one chord is going to be a minor chord. Now, let's forget about these other ones for a moment. And let's look down here at the fifth mode. One, two, three, four, five. Here's the fifth mode down here. We'll fill in all these other ones next time. I don't think we're going to have enough time to do that today. But now look at this. This, let me also write in uh, with this smaller pen here, that, that if this was the natural minor, this note right there would have been a flat seven, wouldn't it? But here we have we've raised that note up by a half step. Now look at this fifth mode of that scale down here. We still have this step and a half interval occurring right here, don't we? This used to be, in a natural minor harmonization, this used to be our good old friend, the Phrygian mode, and it was a minor scale, wasn't it? It was a minor scale that, as a matter of fact, started off with a half step, one flat two. But then, remember, in Phrygian mode, we had a whole step above that, to flat three. That flat seven right there translated down into the fifth mode to be a flatted third. That's why in a natural minor harmonization like we did up here, the five chord was a minor chord because it was our good old friend the Phrygian mode and it had a flat three. But now if we look down here, by raising that flat seven up to a seven, we booted that flatted third up to be a major third. Therefore, accomplishing a transition from the five chord in a natural minor key to be a minor chord, we changed it, the five chord in a harmonic minor harmonization now becomes a major chord because it has note number three in it instead of the flatted third right there. Um, the rest of the scale, therefore, would go four, five, flat six, flat seven, eight. So in a way, this is like the Phrygian mode, but it's got a major third in, in it instead of a minor third. And therefore, we accomplished what we wanted. We wanted the five chord to be a major chord, simply because we liked the way it sounded. Natural minor harmonizations, a harmonization that naturally, a minor key harmonization that naturally evolves out of the major diatonic modes will give you a five chord that's a minor chord. So we 
artificially, if you will, invented the harmonic minor scale by booting that flat seven up to a seven, therefore raising the flatted third up to a major third. Now, if I change that note in the natural minor, is the fifth mode the only mode that's going to be affected? If I move that note in the original mother scale up here, am I only going to affect the, a change in the fifth mode down there? Of course not. All of the modes are going to change. In each of the modes, one of the notes in the mode is going to be shifted up that half step. So we, uh, in a sense, have now discovered seven new scales, the modes of harmonic minor. If you look on your slide rule, you will notice that you have this whole other co uh, column over here. You've got your major diatonic modes here, but over here you have an entire column of harmonic minor modes. And so you can look closely at this and you'll see that it, it reflects exactly what I have going on right here, too. And uh, since we shifted that note, all of the modes are going to be different. This next mode, for example, goes 1, flat 2, flat 3, 4, flat 5, 6, flat 7, 8. This had a flat 6, but it's been bumped up to a 6. This next mode goes 1, 2, 3, 4, sharp 5, 6, 7, Eight. That five was bumped up from five up to sharp five up there. This mode goes one, two, flat three, sharp four, five, six, flat seven, eight. Um, here's our fifth mode. This is the whole reason we made this change in the first place. This is the one where the flatted third got bumped up to actually be a major third right here. That's the fifth mode. Sixth mode goes one, sharp two, three, Sharp four, five, six, seven, eight. And finally, the seventh mode of harmonic minor goes one, flat two, flat three, flat four. How do you like that? That's the only thing I can call that note to avoid alphabetic re or numeric redundancy. Um, flat five, flat six. And then we call this double flat seven up here. We'll talk a little more about this next week. Now, you know what that means? Quickly, I've got about a minute left. That um, every one of these modes has been changed, but that doesn't mean that the chords in every one of these modes has changed. You know, it, it, the only ones that will be affected are the ones where the shifted note was either the first, the third, or the fifth. So, quickly, just to get this out, and we'll elaborate the, on this a little more next time. Remember, in a natural minor harmonization and in a harmonic minor harmonization, we have some slight differences here. The one in both cases remains a minor chord, but, and the two also remains diminished because it's got a flatted third and a flatted fifth in that mode right there. The first one that gets affected, though, is this third mode. That was our good old friend, the Ionian mode up here, but when we bumped that note up right there, it changed from five to sharp five. We haven't mentioned this pattern too much before, but a pattern that goes one, three, sharp five is actually an, what's called an augmented triad. So the three chord in a harmonic minor harmonization is the first one that actually changes because the, th the five has been shifted up from five up to sharp five, changing it from major the way it was in a natural minor harmonization up to sharp five, making it augmented in a harmonic minor harmonization. The, in the fourth mode here, the shifted note was originally a four and it got bumped up to a sharp four. That doesn't alter the triad. The triad is still minor. One, flat, three, five. So the four chord in a harmonic minor harmonization is still a minor chord. It hasn't been changed. However, the fifth mode down here, since the flatted third was bumped up to a third, this is the big one. This is the whole reason we did that. It, the five mode changed from minor to major. That's one of the ones where the triad has actually changed. The sixth mode, the two, got bumped up to become a sharp two. That changes the mode, but it doesn't change the triad. You still have a one, three, and a five in it, so the sixth mode of harmonic minor is still a major chord. 
the last mode, the seventh mode down here, the it was actually the one note that was bumped up to, um, and that changes the seventh mode to diminished. So three of the triads in a harmonization of harmonic minor are different than the three in the natural minor. The three mode becomes augmented instead of major. The five mode becomes major instead of minor. And the seven mode becomes diminished instead of major as it was before. Okay, we're out of time, but that's essentially the gist of what it means to play in a minor key. And isn't that amazing? It only took us essentially one hour to get through that when it took us hours to get through major key music. Anyway, I'm Scotty West. I know that's a lot to get in your head. We'll review a little bit of that and talk a little bit more about it next week. But till then, have a blast and keep on practicing. We'll see you next time, okay?